I'm guessing this is a place where there's more uh, tables to eat lunch at. Um, great to be here in Slush. And I want to start, before I introduce myself actually, with telling you a little bit about my experience with apps. So my name is Sivan, and I download and play with uh, quite a lot of apps. I, I really download a lot of them um, to see how they work, to see what I like or, or like uh, less. And for me, I can tell you that from downloading and playing with a lot of apps and games, I can basically divide my experience with apps in general into two buckets. The first one is the kind of apps that I download, and they immediately become a permanent fixture on my home screen. So they become something I can't really start my day without, or I use them on a daily basis, even a few times a day. Um, apps like uh, Move It, or Waze, or Get Taxi, Uber, depends where I am in the world. Some games are like that. Definitely Google Photos for the past couple of years. And these kind of apps are really something that I can't really see my day without. But there's also the other types of apps. Um, the kind that you download and you sort of immediately regret it. They have a horrible user experience. That is, if you can even get to the user experience, because they constantly crash. Or they send you loads of your notifications that you've never actually asked for, and then you need to find out a way to uh, disable the notification, which is the first thing I usually do. And at the height of your frustration, when you practically want to break your phone, they have the audacity of asking for a review in the store. And I don't know how many of you are actually app developers, but I'm kind of hoping if I would ask you, what kind of app do you have? Do you have the good kind of app or that kind of app? I'm kind of hoping you would be in, in that bucket, in the good bucket. And I've been spending a lot of time thinking, what's the difference between the two? Um, so I'm a very egocentric person, and for me, the difference is usually me. So it's a question of how much do these apps actually know me? How much do they fit my needs? And do they really answer a need or a want that I have? And for me, that's really the difference between having a great kind of app that is really right for me and having that other kind of app. Now let me properly introduce myself before I explain to you where I think the difference comes from. My name is Sivan Enden. I work for Google. I'm from the Israeli office in Tel Aviv. And I'm a strategic partner manager working with uh, mobile app developers and game developers. And what that um, unreadable title basically means is that I help app developers make more money from their app. Basically, so they can build more great apps, more great games, uh, and just continue to work on what's really important to them. So I am working a lot with app developers, and I am thinking about a lot about where that difference actually comes from, from the good kind of apps and the bad kind of apps. And the way they make uh, the good guys, the, the good kind of apps, make their apps is by using all the data they have on their users, using all the data they have on me. And I'm guessing that's not a huge revelation. And I would say that for the huge companies, the big companies, the ones that have unlimited budget, it's really not a question. They have uh, data analysts. They have great BI systems that can collect all the data points they would want. So they have all the resources. But for the smaller app developers, or for the more beginner ones, or for the startups, it's really a hard task. And why is it so hard? Well, basically, I can, there's a huge bear behind us. <laughs> basically, um, why is it such a hard task to look at all your data? To begin with, we're talking about a huge amount of data. Uh, some researchers show that we look at our screens about 150 times a day. Uh, I don't know how many of you have your phones open. Think about the amount of times you've checked your phone or what other uh, talks are available just in the two, three minutes since I got on stage. How can you even collect that amount of data on your app? That's a huge amount of data. And assuming you are able to collect all that data, what are you going to do with it? How are you going to spot the trends? Is it more interesting that you have more females than males? Is it more interesting that you have a younger audience or that they're in Helsinki versus in Berlin or somewhere else in the world? Uh, which trends are actually interesting and how are you going to spot it from that huge pool of data? 
And assuming you do conquer these first few uh, two tasks that are really extremely challenging, how are you going to act upon your insights? And we understood at Google that conquering these challenges is not an easy task, especially when you're starting or when you don't have the unlimited budget the, those huge companies have. And for that reason, we launched a new service called Firebase, actually compiled of a few different services. We just launched it at Google I.O. in May earlier this year. And Firebase is built by app developers for app developers to really solve these core issues, these core tasks of everything that involves building a good app. And when we talk to app developers over the years, we discovered that we can divide their experience or their challenges into three steps. So the first would be the develop stage. This is the stage where you have all, all your backend services. This is where you put all your foundations. Then you need to grow your app. How do you gain users? How do you retain them? How do you grow their engagement? And lastly, you also need to earn money. Because we need to earn money in order to keep building more apps. We're also in it for the money. But we also discovered that though we describe this process this way, it's not really a linear process and definitely not a completely chronological process. And that a better way to look at it is probably more of a cycle where each step of the cycle feeds into the next one. So if you develop your app better, you would be able to grow your user base more. And according to that, maybe add some more development, earn more money. And this whole cycle feeds into each other. And this is the way we really wanted to think about what services do we at Google, can we at Google offer to app developers? So when we built Firebase, we actually built a suite of products, 15 different products, that are mostly free or at a very competitive price, and mostly all of them in one SDK. So you no longer need to put a whole lot of SDKs and try to think about how heavy will it make my app? How will they work together with services like um, Test Lab? allowing you to test your app on over 50 Android devices. And this number is actually growing um, <laughs> on a pretty weekly basis, adding more and more devices. With crash reporting, allowing you to know when did your app did not work and for which users did it not work and how to track it. With free services such as notifications, allowing you to send as many notifications, do not abuse this service. Uh, for those like me who do not like notifications, but allowing you to send free notifications to any segment of your users. Um, and of course, things like dynamic links, app invites, and more. And all of this in one SDK, so all these services work seamlessly together. But at the basis of all this, because we do think that every action you make in your app should be based on data, should be based on how your users, people like me, are behaving within your app. On the basis of all this, it's Firebase Analytics. And we think that Firebase Analytics is really the groundbreaking um, news that we brought with Firebase. Because it really allows you to do new things within your app. It gives you more power. And why is it so groundbreaking? Where are the fireworks behind Firebase Analytics? Well, it comes down to these four things. First of all, it's out of the box. Once you implement the Firebase SDK, doesn't matter which service you're interested in, could be just the dynamic links, could be just a notification, you immediately start getting data on your users. You already get some automatic event reporting on some of the actions your users are doing within your app. So you get value immediately. It's seamlessly integrated with all these 14 other services that Firebase had that we showed before. So you can also act upon your data, and you no longer need to think, how will I sync these different services together? It's cross-platform, because we know you're developing for both Android and iOS. And probably the biggest news of it all, uh, which is always fun to say, it's free and it's unlimited. So no matter how big is your app, and it's going to get to a billion downloads, and it's going to get to uh, hundreds of millions of users, it's going to cost you nothing. You no longer have to choose what to measure. You no longer need to choose, do I really want to measure this event for my, uh, for my users? It's going to be too heavy on my budget. You can measure everything 
and com for completely free. And how hard is it to get started with Firebase? I'm kind of hoping by the end of this talk you will just start working with it. So you download the SDK, two lines of codes for iOS, a small change to your build files on, and, uh, on Android, and that's it. You're live with all these Firebase services and already starting to get some value um, from the analytics. And how will it look like? So when you activate Firebase, you start getting some automatic events. These are events that you can, or, this is data you can already get on the, your users within your app with no co coding needed. So you don't need to add any lines of code in order to get this data. These are a dozen of events such as um, first open, in-app purchase, and things like um, um, session start, really maybe a little more than the basic needs on what is happening within your app. And also, of course, some generic data such as age, gender, what device they're using. So you already start to get a feel on what's really happening within your app. But of course, that's not enough. That's just a starting point. And Firebase allows you basically to track anything that matters to you. And different things would matter to different app developers because you have different apps and different users. Um, so that's a lot of freedom. And freedom's great. The only thing is it's sometimes a bit confusing. So where to start? And if you do want to get a little help on where exactly do I start, then you can go to our help center. And we can give you a few ideas on what to track. And the way we do it is we think, well, these kind of apps, these kind of verticals, should be more interested in these kind of events. So let's take games, for example. Uh, if you have a tutorial, you'd probably want to see how many people began your tutorial and how many people ended your tut tutorial. Is it really that important to have it in your game? Um, level up, of course, is also Im interesting. And for every vertical from this list of verticals, we have some ideas for you. But on top of that, again, you can measure whatever you want. Whatever event matters to you, so you can know what's really happening within your app. And for data geeks like myself, this is already enough to get me super excited. Because you get some dashboards, and you can start playing with it. And you can see my users did this and this. And then filter by cohort. What did the women do? What did the men do? Uh, what happened on a specific day? What are the users that did not update my version to in my app? Why did they not update to the new version? And you can start playing with the data. Um, and this is really exciting to see what's happening in your app almost live, to keep updating it, refreshing it. And this is really a great, great start. Um, but we need to remember it's just a start. This is just, OK, so you can see what's happening in your app. But when we're talking about really making a change in your app and making it right for me, because again, I'm, I'm really interested in me, the first step would be to understand how users behave in your, in your app. So Firebase Analytics would help you get these insights on how the users behave in your app. But the next step, the more interesting step, would be to turn these insights on your users into actions in order to grow, and grow in whatever matters to you, be it revenues, retention, engagement, or any other metric that's really relevant for you and for your app. So let's talk about how we take it from the analytics side to the actionable side. So I'm going to show just one example of a combination of tools, and there are a lot more um, available, and you can probably think of a lot more that's even more relevant for you. But the combination I will show is a combination of remote config, I will explain in a second what it is, with AdMob, our um, apps, um, uh, mobile apps uh, ad network, and of course, based on analytics, so that everything will be based on the data on your users. So what is remote config? Remote config allows you to change the look and feel of your app without users having to update or do anything from their end. And this is really great, because you might want to change some things for specific users or notify specific users of things that you've done. Let's just take one example. Um, assuming you have a game. You just launched level 6. And you want to let your relevant users know that level 6 is now available. You probably don't want to let the ones who just started playing your games and that are still in level one or two know that there's a level six, probably less relevant for them. But for those in level five, probably you want to target these specific ones. 
So how are we going to do that? We're going to use Firebase Analytics in order to create audience groups by levels. Then we're going to use remote config in order to target only the users in level five. And we're going to use the free notification tool to send just these users a message saying, hey, guys, level six is now available. You're almost there. So instead of bombarding people that maybe it's not relevant for them with notification, like me, you are able to send the relevant information just to the relevant audience. And this is just one use case of remote config. And I'll go sh I'm going to show you another one. But before that, AdMob. So I'm assuming most of you know AdMob. We've been here for a while. We've actually recently announced that we have over 1 million apps using AdMob for monetization. And why is it sh such a popular um, ad network service? Well, first of all, we have, over, um, we have millions of AdWords advertisers who are supplying demand for our mobile ad network, basically bringing up the fill rate. We have the different uh, ad exchanges uh, buying traffic on, on, our, uh, on our Google DoubleClick ad exchange, bringing the CPMs up. And we have the opportunity also to allow you to do direct deals, because sometimes for your specific app, you have a specific advertiser that you want to show it there, and you will probably get even higher rates. And on top of that, we also have a mediation service. So for any format, you can work with pretty much any network you want to work with. And the combination of all this will allow you to get your CPM as high as you can with a close to 100% fill rate on practically each and every one of your impression, bringing your revenue up, which is, of course, what you want in your app. And if we're talking about, again, what does it look like exactly? So the bread and butter of AdMob and the beginning of it all is the banners, which we see in the top left. But over the years and over the change in the use of application, we've evolved, and this whole market has actually evolved. So we have interstitials taking up a full screen with a higher CPM. We have video ads, even more targeted at maybe the brand advertising for a different uh, experience. We have native ads, which allow you to take the same type of attention you do to the design of your game, to the music in your game, to the whole process of your game, and to the design of the ads, to look as part of the game. And we're now just tapping into the world of rewarded advertising. So it all sounds great, but uh, speaking to app developers, and actually game developers specifically even more, a lot of times they tell me, yeah, but when you're talking about ad monetization, it's more of a take it or leave it game. Because it's really, really hard to test. We would like to test if uh, maybe adding games hurts the experience of our uh, users on the app or in the game. Would it make them stay on the, on the game less? What's the right frequency to use? Which format should I use? And while all this testing might have been available before, it requires some coding. It requires some work. And in this case, when the take it or leave it, but if you take it, it requires a lot of work, a lot of them just decided to leave it. And that meant leaving money on the table, quite a lot of money. Some researchers show that uh, 2017 is supposed to populate up to $62 billion in apps advertising in general, not just us. Um, so even if you are able to take a small fraction of these $62 billion, that could be quite nice, but again, required a lot of work. Because we do want to do all these testings. We want to make sure we're doing the right thing for our users, for our app. And in this void between the take it and leave it and the ability to test come the combination of AdMob and Firebase. So now with Firebase Analytics, we'll be able to create different audience groups. Or even just decide we're just going to target ads to 5% or 10% of our users just to test it at first. With remote config, we'd be able to do different things such as A-B testing on format or frequency or anything else that matters to us. And most importantly, going back into the analytics, we'll be able to measure impact. So to really see what does it do for our users? What does it mean for us to add ads into our app or into our game? And of course, improve upon this knowledge in a fairly easy way, all within the same system. And as an, and as an ad network, we keep evolving. Because we hear feedback from app developers and from users that they want something different sometimes. 
And the way we think of ads is we want to create something that's a good user experience for the end user and will bring higher CPMs for the publisher. So we create things like trial run ads where your users can actually experiment with the game that they see the advertisement for. So it's a live experimentation of the game. Things like interactive interstitial when they can scroll within the app you're advertising or things like this. And we keep involving and innovating this ad space to make it more relevant for whatever app you are targeting. And also recently, uh, earlier this year, we launched rewarded mediation. So that now you no longer need to choose which mediation service to work with because if you're working with the AdMob mediation service, it basically covers all the different formats you want to work with, with all the networks you want to work with. So we have the mediation service for the banners, interstitials, the native, and the rewarded space. And all of this could be tested, again, with remote config and Firebase analytics. So this was just one example of the combination of different features in Firebase that would help make your app more user-centric, more right for your user. And by now, we have over 750,000 active Firebase accounts. So that's active app developers testing the system. And it's really easy to do. It's free, so it doesn't require you to put any payment. And you immediately start getting value. Um, so I'm kind of hoping to get more and more good stories of these kind of tests and how to make the experience better for your end user. And if we're talking about the monetization journey, I think until recently, the conversation was really about how do I choose the right monetization strategy? Should I go with in-app purchase? Should I go with ad monetization? Should I go with a subscription or a premium? And you sort of needed to choose one specific monetization strategy. And we want to make it much more liberal. We want to make sure whatever it is you choose is right for you and it's easy to change. So with Firebase Analytics, you can track the user behavior within your app. You can create different audiences because maybe different groups of people using your app would have a better monetization uh, track relevant for them. You can test ad monetization, so you can really see the effect of it. And you can always analyze and improve. And this is, again, a cyclic process that never really ends because you want to keep improving. And if there's one thing I want you to take from this talk, and uh, I think in general, is that in apps, in games, and same as in day-to-day -day life, it's the one-on-one -on -one interaction that really matters. It's how much you make your, your end user feel that your app is really built for them. And while you may have millions of users using the same app, your app, they're different, and they might have different needs. And we want to help you make your app as user-centric as possible and to do it in the easiest possible way. So you don't need to invent the wheel every time uh, to begin with. So with Firebase, we are trying to give you all these tools to help you make your, your app as relevant as it, as it could be to your end user. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. I've seen some great talks around here. Um, thank you. <laughs>